Hey everyone and welcome to the first episode of What Wargame Doesn't Tell You. This is a sort of tutorial-ish type of video format that is not necessarily for completely new players. It's more for players who roughly know how the game works but don't exactly know how damage is calculated and stuff like that. So it's basically about stuff you don't get from just reading unit cards or from stuff that the armory tells you. So probably even some more experienced players can maybe learn a thing or two. So when it comes to AP, let's start with kinetic. Like it already tells you, for every 175 meters you get closer to a target, you get one more AP. However, it AP caps out at 30. You can't go higher than that. So just keep that in mind that in forests, an M1A2's AP won't get up to 35 AP or something. Then the damage is calculated by armor penetration or AP minus armor value or just AV divided by 2 and then plus 1. So that means in order to one shot a tank like the M8 HES, you need a difference, you, uh, you need 21 AP to one shot it, like the Leclerc, at max range it is. If you if you get closer, if you get like at 2100 meter, of course 20 AP would be enough. So the rule of thumb is in order to kill something in one hit with kinetic, you need to have a difference to its armor value of 18 AP. Now, when it comes to heat, the, there isn't a formula to determine how much damage you deal. The game uses tables to tell to deal the damage, because the difference of 7 AP is not the same at every, let's call it level. To get, get, give you an example, the Polish SU-22. Syria 30 has uh, two missiles with 13 AP. The Challenger 2 has 23 front armor. Each missile with a different difference of 7 AP, of course, deals 5 damage. However, the RPG of a VDV 90 with 24 AP deals only 4.5 damage to a K1. So, depending on which armor levels you look at, you might get more or less damage with the same AP difference. So just keep that in mind that just uh, that, that that's not always the same. But the rule of thumb is that you need 14 AP difference to one-shot something with heat. And that applies to pretty much every armor type, besides two exceptions like kinetic, but we'll come to that when we go to armor values. So that means a VDV-90 can easily one-shot or regularly one-shot a Mario 2 up front, just like a uh, Modus Reiki 90. Or they can one-shot a Leopard 1A5, which also has 10 armor value. And let's let's go to armor, yeah. So there are basically two, or maybe you want, if you want to be precise, three types of armor, let's call it that way, especially when it comes to transports. So the first category is the zero armor transports. They're, they don't reduce damage by everything of course, but the thing is that um, for to kill it with AP weapons, you basically need 5 AP if it has 10 HP. Like, well the Hummy is a bad example, let's look at the Stalwart, I think that one has 10 HP. Does it have? No, it also has 5. Whatever. So basically armor uh, AP always deals double damage. No matter whether it is, it is kinetic or heat. So 16 AP will leave 32 damage to, a, to an unarmored target. Even, like, I, like I said, no matter whether it is kinetic or heat. And the overkill damage will be, that will be dealt to the infantry in the transport. So keep that in mind. When it comes to one armor transports, like the M1, M113, the damage is 1 to 1. Again, no difference between heat and kinetic. So, uh, Kyler will deal 15 damage to one armor vehicle, and uh, SP uh, BMP1 SP1 will deal 12 damage to one armor vehicles. And again, the overkill damage will be dealt to the infantry in it. So let's say they had their rifleman in there. If the BMP1 shoots at it, 
it uh, kills the transport and eight um, riflemen survive. But it also, but keep in mind that of course the closer you get, the more damage you deal with kinetic weapons. So the heat table and the uh, kinetic formula to deal damage will only be applied to vehicles with an armor of two or more, which is why vehicles like the North Norwegian XA180 and especially the XA186 and O are so much better than like the Fuchs, not to mention the weapon. But just the armor alone makes a huge difference because often you can survive a shot from a Leopard 1A5 or even a T72B1 or T62BM4 ABM. So that's really something that is useful to know. And when it comes to armor, there's more stuff that I would like to talk about, and that is laser guided bombs, like the ones from the Nighthawk or the Harrier 7, are probably the two most prominent planes when it comes to that. They are mo besides the Night Nighthawk, which can be used for both very good, the Harrier is mostly used for anti tanks or anti vehicle duties because they all hit the same point when you fire precision, which makes the splash damage not very high. So, what is good to know about it? The Harrier GR7, now I'm dumb it. Yeah, the Harrier GR7 and the Nighthawk will always steal, will always kill any vehicle that has three top armor or less at full health. That means especially tanks like the TADUM, or if you play blue on blue, the Kaiumaru Shiki and the Leopard 2 F5. Are, are prime targets for those planes. So really, really try to keep them safe and always in cover when you play against a deck that has Harrier 7 or Nighthawk. And to a top armor of 4, like the BU, they deal 8 damage, so still very much. And keep in mind that when L LGBs hit tanks, they basically instantly stun and panic the tank, making it not able to move for a few seconds. And there's another LGB plane that you don't see quite often because Red Dragon is currently not that strong, and that is the Q5D. Um, it's not as strong as the GR7 or the Harrier, but it will deal 9 damage to vehicles with top armor of 3. So that's basically most of it. The rule of thumbs are from an armor value of 2 onwards, you need 18 AP difference to kill something with kinetic AP and 14 AP difference to get something with heat AP. And if you play against a deck that has a Nighthawk or a Harrier 7, keep your tanks with 3 top armor safe and your health with tanks with 4 top, um, top armor at, at least 9 HP if you can. Unless you know the enemy doesn't have these planes anymore because you killed both of them. So yeah, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.